Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. In this uh, video, in the next uh, number, I'll be discussing how our climate system is essentially spiraling out of control. You know, abrupt climate system change is affecting all aspects of the planet now and what we do on the planet and what all of the species, the plants and animals uh, have to tolerate. And with the rapidly rising temperatures, with the uneven heating uh, distribution on the planet and the collapsing of the jet streams and the ongoing increase of extreme weather events in terms of frequency, severity and duration we're facing extremely severe consequences. So in this video, I'm gonna go and discuss a number of them, but some of the key ones that I'll be discussing first are the most recent peer-reviewed scientific papers that are addressing uh, many of these issues. So I'll be discussing the Arctic sea ice Atlantification um, a recent paper just came out on that. So basically the warm salt water from the Atlantic Ocean is penetrating deep into the Arctic Ocean and it's preventing the Arctic sea ice from being, from forming uh, thick sea ice in the winters. And this is a, therefore, you know, the ice base is not established like it used to be so we're rapidly losing arctic sea ice i'll talk about another paper uh, which i call you know arctic sea ice pacific pacification okay so basically this paper talked about uh, so-called hot water bombs that went through the bering strait from the pacific ocean into the Arctic Ocean and undercut the ice from below and caused, uh, you know, significant melting after the freeze up cycle would normally have begun. So again, hammers the, the ability of the sea ice to grow thick in the winter time. So we're rapidly losing Arctic sea ice. We're coming to a period where it will you know, we'll have the first blue ocean event, no sea ice in the Arctic Ocean, you know, in September and the, within the next uh, few years, probably, certainly within the decade. There's various thermodynamic and dynamic processes that are going on. The thermodynamic processes just sink thermo heat um, and the dynamics of heat. And the dynamic processes are things like the export of ice out the Fram Strait or the ice being pushed to one side of the Arctic Ocean Basin, um, or the ice being, you know, either, you know, pushed up and ridged into thicker areas in some regions and no ice in other regions, or uh, diverging processes where the sea ice is just spread out more and more. Um, so you've got more coverage, but much, much thinner ice. So those are the dynamic processes. And the thermodynamic processes, of course, are involved the melting from above and the melting from below. And the melting from below due to warmer oceans are becoming a increasingly dominant uh, mechanism for eliminating Arctic sea ice. We have an increasing role of ocean heat in the Arctic sea ice, and it's mostly affecting winter growth. Um, it's, it's, it's preventing significant ice buildup in winters. Of course, the Arctic uh, contains vast regions of permafrost and there's this huge permafrost carbon feedback. So there's a new paper talking about the permafrost, the terrestrial permafrost in the Arctic and subarctic, but also the marine permafrost that is sitting on the continental shelves. Okay, so for example, the Eastern Siberian Arctic Shelf, and that's being thawed by the warming water column. And of course, when you thaw permafrost, 
you expose the organic matter to microbial decomposition. It doesn't do that in the frozen state. So of course that generates CO2 if, if oxygen is available in a so-called aerobic environment and methane if there's no oxygen available. The temperature in the Arctic region has risen 0.6 degrees Celsius per decade, averaged over the last 30 years. But the most previous decade, it's more like a degree Celsius, you know, rise in temperature um, per uh, decade. So this is just phenomenal growth. You know, the Arctic is warming much, much faster than the rest of the planet. And we're facing the consequences. So uh, this methane paper discusses the idea of the abrupt releases of methane versus slower, more sustained releases. Of course, in the abrupt case, Peter Wadhams um, uh, discussed a you know 50 gigaton release over either a year or over a decade. Um, and looked, they looked, in, and he and a co-author, uh, they looked at the um, effects on the economy, and it turns out, you know, of course, it's trillions of dollars of economic damage. And there's vast amounts of methane in the Arctic uh, permafrost. Uh, initial estimates a number of years ago said about 1,700 gigatons. That's a huge carbon pool. Um, and you can divide it up into the top three meters, deeper than three meters down, and very, very deep deposits. And also uh, shallow submarine, submarine-based uh, deposits. The Arctic permafrost on land in the first zero to three meters, so from the surface down three meters, about 10 feet or so, the most recent numbers, um, the best science is showing 1,035 petagrams. Of course, a petagram is a gigaton. That's in the first zero to three meters. To give you an idea, the rest of the Earth, excluding the Arctic, has about 2,050 petagrams. So the Arctic is an enormous source on a global scale, an enormous reservoir of carbon. If you look at depths greater than three meters in the Arctic, in the Yodoma region of Siberia, it's an estimated 210 to 456 petagrams. Um, and greater than three meters depths outside the Yodoma region in the rest of the Arctic, between 350 and 465 petagrams. And then, of course, there's large quantities um, on the eastern Siberian Arctic shelf. You know, this is the largest, shallowest continental shelf on Earth. The water is warming significantly over the eastern Siberian Arctic shelf. And when you, f these, these frozen sediments on the continental shelf, of course, they were exposed. Um, they were above sea level during the last ice age and there was vegetation on those regions and as a result organic matter built up and then as sea level rose at the end of the last ice age a uh, total of 135 meters of course the deeper spots were covered first and that water thaws and thins the permafrost layer in the sediment and of course you know the areas in the shallowest regions now are the thickest have the thickest permafrost because they were submerged much more recently than the deeper levels. So, you know, climate change is having profound effects on the earth. It's, it's, it's affecting people, whether they realize it or not, today in significant manners. And I fully expect uh, global food shortages followed by rapid price increases within about a decade, business as usual, and this will cause a global famine and people will be panicking at that point. Climate change has shifted the Earth's axes of rotation because the melting ice that is in, in the melting ice, I'm talking about the glaciers on land, 
As it melts, that water flows to the sea. Water is extremely heavy. So we're getting a redistribution of mass on the planet near the poles and also in glaci any glaciated regions. And this is changing the dynamics, the physics of the rotating Earth, and it's caused the axes of rotation to shift. And this is having significant effects on GPS systems and on, you know, um, basically on where the magnetic field is centered on the Earth because the rotation is shifting. Climate change has also reduced the thickness of the stratosphere and that, you know, recent paper I'll also discuss. Um, it's, it's increased the height of the troposphere, the lower atmosphere, because of the warming. Warm air expands, so it pushes up the level, the boundary called the tropopause between this, the, the troposphere, the lowest level of the atmosphere, and the stratosphere. So the stratosphere lower level is being pushed up, but also much more energy is being absorbed um, in from the greenhouse gases in the lower atmosphere of the troposphere so less so the stratosphere has been cooling and cooler air contracts so that's also having a profound in influence on the stratosphere and there's all kinds of effects on that i mean we call the up upper atmosphere the ignorosphere because you know, we don't really study it that much, but there's profound effects there. Um, and, you know, the stratosphere runs from uh, up to, you know, up to 60 kilometers high. So we're actually affecting the atmosphere up to 60 kilometers high, you know. And one of the impacts on air travel is that there's a lot more clear air turbulence in at the at the altitude that planes fly so there's a lot more you know clear air turbulence is you can't see it on radar it's like an air pocket planes hit it it can fall several hundred meters um, kilometers even in a, in a very short period of time and cause chaos within the cabin of the of the aircraft so i'm gonna i'm talking about all of these things but i want to show you you know i'm just going to go through this uh, collection of recent climate events and there's always a huge number of serious things that are happening and uh, it keeps people like myself who like to report it um, on their toes and part of the most difficult job becomes in sort of filtering and and you know which things are most important which things are going to affect people and and in what way and how quickly is the climate changing and where do we expect it to go um, and how, how soon. So those are all questions that I, I strive to, uh, to get at. So let me um, go now to the uh, details um, and okay, my computer went to sleep because my video was so long. Okay, so you're probably familiar with my website, paulbeckwith.net. Please consider making a donation uh, by PayPal. You can also set it up monthly. I pride myself in being an independent scientist so I can give you the unvarnished truth on what is happening with, the cli with climate system change. And... Um, of course, these are my videos, my channel. You can just Google Paul Beck with YouTube and do searches, and you can search for any topic that you want. I've done well over a thousand videos, and I still need to categorize them so that it's easier for people to search. You know, have a, have an Excel spreadsheet searchable with all of the different video topics or something like that. Um, Okay, uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, follow me on Facebook. Um, this is uh, an article that was posted recently on Atlantification. So, so I'll talk about that. Uh, so let's have a look at that. So the Arctic sea ice succumbs to Atlantification, and I'll have to do a f um, end this video. Thanks for listening, and I'll continue. Thanks again.